Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Supriya. I'm back with uh, the continuation of our uh, previous load testing topic. I just missed out few points which I definitely want to let you know. So here we discussed about the goal and why do we perform load testing and also how to identify uh, different load test scenarios and also uh, the things to keep in mind before we getting started with uh, load testing and also discussed whether it is an optional or mandatory task before we sign off now coming to uh, today's uh, topic i just want to let you know few more things about load testing so while we discussed about the scenarios to identify the load testing we actually have to discuss like when do we when do we perform load test activity like uh, let me write it down when this is point number six of um, the continuation of our previous session when to perform load test when i uh, what i mean here is like we do have uh, uh, agile methodology all around right most of the projects are uh, um, using the agile methodology which is uh, a sprint workflow so each sprint is um, the span of two weeks we we commit to uh, some part of work and we complete it so when do we actually perform load testing do we perform it per sprint definitely answer is no so we do perform load testing when we have any new initiative rolling out to production or if there is any major change in your application so be it several sprints like you have multiple initiatives going on right so for example you are working on a project which is uh, um, which corresponds to the span of maybe six sprints right so six end of sixth sprint is when you roll out to production maybe but you know before before after completing your functional testing and before you roll it out to production that's when you actually do your load testing so the scenario usually when you do is when there is any major migration going on if there is any brand new application that's rolling out to production or if there is any architecture change within your application for example there is a oh, on premises server and they are moving it to aws right that's a major change in your complete infrastructure of the application so you know well, you must have performed the load test on the on premises already and you know the response times so our goal here should be not to get our response times lower to what our current production response times are with any technology changes so that's kind of um, the way you actually uh, deal with a low test uh, numbers when you already have uh, some low test numbers in place so if you completely don't have any low test numbers that's well and good like we can we will go over the same process what we, what we discussed before if it's an old talk to business get the numbers get it reviewed and then perform it but th these are the scenarios like usually for any major migrations we do perform the low test okay and now um the sec the other topic which i wanted to discuss is uh, the load test failure scenarios right so there might be different scenarios when when you see that the load test is failing uh, it's always recommended to add incremental loads and then start testing out guys so once you review those numbers you already have the numbers in hand so your numbers if you are sending 2000 requests right do not give all the load at a time until you know that benchmark so for example if your requests up to 1500 are failing give it a 500 you see all pass next make it 1000 you see everything goes fine well make it 1500 it's good if it fails at 2000 right you know that you know that until 1500 requests it is able to handle but there is some problem between 1500 to 2000 so to know that point incremental addition of loads to server helps us a lot so always try to do that and in case of failure right we uh don't know exactly why it fell there might be a number of reasons uh for failures guys so if there could be you know memory memory leakages within inside and there might be the cpu you know usage having more usage of cpu and that might error out there might be this network latency issues also uh, if you know that like the browser caching issues might also cause the performance delays 
and uh, coming to the application right i just want to list out few of the issues on the high level so there might be this um, you know any application uh, it talks to server and gets back the response this is what we know but there's lot of uh, communication going within right it might call number of apis there might be the middle tier involved in it where we have these api responses coming back the api response would be transformed and then put to the client you know depends upon your architecture there might be lot of communication happening so the performance might affect when your application code has some glitches okay or the database connectivity right if it is taking too long or it might have those connection timeout issues usually there will be these config files where they set the sql server timeouts and everything so from the application side if there are huge delays right there might be timeouts happening and the performance goes down so once you see an issue issue is issue like from qa side we know we know that there is an issue but we also have to understand the type of issue that uh, have actually happened which deteriorated the performance because that helps us for the upcoming you know testing or coming up with you know the low test scenarios and what not so these are all um, the different areas that you need to um you know analyze if there is any failure in your load test of course you would let the dev team know and they would come up, come back with their analysis but it is always good to have a discussion with your developer to understand what kind of an issue it is and how did they even fix this issue and uh, mainly the third party if if your application right by any chance it's talking to any external third party applications or apis that adds lots of delays to okay and then uh, once you understand the failure uh, and all like you know once you are convinced you would your development team would you know make either infrastructure change or you know they might increase the memory or increase the timeouts or do whatever changes and they'll ask you to retest it again and that's when once you see everything passed you will give provide your sign off so always try to get or buy time for your load test i know that's the biggest challenge as a qa we come across to have or if whenever we ask for more time there would be more questions like why do you need time why do we have to do you know so for that point right we have to be very confident and sometimes stand to your point strictly that you know this is definitely a must before we sign off if not it is very difficult to get some time back to provide you know to do our testing so why do you need it is what you need to understand first before you project it to the broader team so buy buy good amount of time for your testing and then you know make sure that load testing is part of your uh, regular sign off process so the topics that i missed out mainly are when do we perform load testing not about the scenarios but we did talk about the actual um, scenario when we actually want to perform the load testing like uh, whether it is for any major migrations or any new application rolling out to production or not and in case of failure we did discuss about uh, the areas that we need to see why it failed and uh, what are the major high level areas which uh, causes the performance uh, uh, delays or whatever we just discuss those on the high level and then uh, the last thing is getting time or you know getting approval for performing this load test so we need to stick to stick to the point that we definitely have to do it so i just thought i missed these in my previous uh, video so i had added one more session thank you for watching guys if you i missed anything please feel free to add and i'll definitely review and i'll make a new video with all the new um, information that i get uh, until then um, stay safe i'll meet you all in the next session happy testing everybody bye bye